Coming up on Fox 4 Sports Watch, the preamble to Cowboys training camp is the state of the Cowboys address. Jerry Jones explains why he stopped saying the word Super Bowl, how good the 2015 Cowboys look on paper, and can this running back core be better than the DeMarco Murray show from a year ago? Fox 4 Sports Watch, let's go. You're listening to Fox 4 Sports with Mike Ducey and Edward Egras. Welcome once again to Fox 4 Sports Watch, your podcast for Fox 4 Sports. I am Edward Egras, and for the first time in the series of this podcast, I am joined by the master, Mike Ducey. Well, (laughs) Ed, thank you very much. It it was a real effort to walk uh, 20 feet across the hall to do this, but no, thanks for having me. Don't don't you love the uh, palatial estate that we have? uh, nice. I, yes. I would expect nothing less here in the uh, the Rembert building. I, I was Beautiful. I was commenting the other day that our podcast office is uh, that of a Turkish prison. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> I, yes, <laughs> right. From, I, I, there's a there's a movie reference there somewhere. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. I looked it up on Wikipedia. It was great. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's get started. So uh, the Cowboys had their uh, State of the Cowboys address uh, on Wednesday in Oxnard, California. Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and Jason Garrett all spoke there, and uh, one of the the first questions that Jerry Jones fielded was if he's going to bring back that Super Bowl talk that we remember uh, from several years back. He hadn't said it too much lately, and there's that possibility that he could bring it back, and here is his response to that idea. Well, I think as last year in those recent years, I'm going to keep avoiding it this year, and uh, uh, I think that um, we certainly have reason uh, to be uh, optimistic uh, because, uh, frankly, uh, we can look at the way our team evolved last year. We can look at some of the circumstances that uh, individually with players as well as as a, a team, as well as as uh, parts within the team. And if we can see how that worked last year and gave us some success, it's not hard to project and say, boy, if we can do that last year, maybe we can get some more of that this year. Again, that's Jerry Jones uh, saying that he is not going to resuscitate the Super Super Bowl talk back. I think it's a very smart move on his part, given just how haphazard the NFL can be, especially when you talk about the playoffs. Yeah, he got burned a few years ago, maybe more than one year at training camp, back in the days where they really expected to win Super Bowls every year. And... Uh, they didn't always follow through. They haven't followed through in a long, long time now. So, yeah, he's, he's staying away from that. But I think it's interesting because of recent years, this is the one where he probably has the, the most reason to expect the Super Bowl possibility anyway, just given what this team has on paper. But Jerry was upbeat as he always is. He's always optimistic about his team. And I think he feels physically better now. I mean, it, and you, you, you saw him at Valley Ranch over the last year and, and – and I didn't know what the problem was. He wasn't getting around very well. And, you know, he's in his 70s now. But then to learn that he had the hip replacement surgery, it really it made sense. But, man, like eight days later, he's, he's at the podium in Oxnard not using a cane or crutches or anything. So it looks like he feels good. I recall the comment that he made last year that uh, mentally he feels like a 40-year-old. Yeah. And so regardless of how he may feel physically or how he may look physically, he's still very much – you know, perhaps stubborn in some ways, that he is still a you know middle-aged man of sorts. That you know he's he's about as old as Stephen is or Jerry Jr. is. Feels like he's forty, and some would say he acts like he's eighteen. Sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> but no, his his spirit is is undeniable. And what I wouldn't give to have half of the energy that man has uh, again at age seventy-two or, or whatever he is. But the fact that he doesn't use the the phrase Super Bowl, I think that's a little bit of respect he's showing for Jason Garrett because they have different philosophies in how they approach a season. I mean, Garrett on on Wednesday talked about how every year is a new year. You have to totally totally start over. And Jerry said just a second later, well, I think we can build on what happened last year and take some of that enthusiasm. They have different ways of looking at things in, in some regards. So I think Jerry just taps the brakes a little bit on the Super Bowl talk in some ways to not hear it from his head coach. I would argue that Jason Garrett is perhaps the second most perhaps inclined to being the most analytic coach that the Cowboys have ever had. Maybe behind Jimmy Johnson just from the onset, given how they approached the draft and how he approached uh, exchanging a couple players and trades and things like that, he may very well become the number one analytic coach that the Cowboys have ever had. And when you think about it, it's... It's such a haphazard game, the NFL is, especially when it comes to the playoffs. I mean, yes, the Seahawks won the NFC the last couple of years, but before that, you have to go back to the late 90s with the Packers 
to, to look at a team that, that was able to repeat. And so predicting this is very difficult. And also, four new teams make the playoffs every year, and four teams are taken out. And that number has actually gone up the last 10 seasons. It's more like five teams come in, and five teams are taken out. And there's so many tiny things, and, and we watched the playoffs carefully last season. So many razor-thin things can happen for or against you to where – you know, going to the Super Bowl or not going to the Super Bowl may be based upon, you know, a ridiculous comeback or a catch that yeah. wasn't or a call, a defensive call that wasn't made or should have been made that it, it seems foolish to predict something grandiose like the Super Bowl when too many things can get in your way that really have nothing to do with you. Yeah, and I think Garrett's philosophy serves serves him well and it served his team. It has served his team well for the most part. In that you know he is he is hyper focused. He he just he, he we get tired of hearing him talk about the process, and we're just trying to win this practice and all that. But at the same time, it's disingenuous in some ways. You know, Wednesday he was asked about evaluating Mo Claiborne and what are your expectations for his productivity, and he said we don't have expectations for productivity. We just have expectations for how we can prepare a player or how a player can prepare. Well, of course you have expectations for, <laughs> for productivity. You envision in your mind what this guy might be able to do for you. You have to. So th sometimes I think Jason takes it a little too far when he's talking, uh, when he's talking with us. But, and again, it's somewhat disingenuous on his part, on one hand, to say every year is totally new, but on in the next breath talk about changing the culture because that culture by definition is something that carries over from year to year, and I think he's done a good job of, of changing that as well. So uh, it's a good balance, really, between Garrett and Jerry when it's when it's working. Jerry's a big picture guy, and um, you know wants to always you know assume that the best can happen. And, and Jason's, as you said, very very analytical and uh, very much in the moment. So they, they tend to complement each other pretty well. Absolutely. Let's move on now to uh, Stephen Jones's take on how good these Cowboys can be, obviously, with this offseason, the draft, so many free agent acquisitions, a lot of, a lot of new players uh, involved in these 2015 Cowboys. So let's listen to Stephen Jones on what he has to say concerning these 2015 Cowboys. You know, health is a big thing. You know, it's going to be a big thing. And then we'll just see, you know, how we do day to day out here in training camp. I think, you know, I've had conversations with each and every one of you out there that, you know, player acquisitions is 365 days a year. Uh, if you're really truthful with yourself, we're, we're probably going to be looking for some help at the wire. We're probably going to be looking uh, for ways to improve ourselves, and we need to do that. So uh, we'll see how uh, training camp uh, proceeds. Uh, we'll see how we're playing. Uh, we'll see what the tape looks like. And, you know, if we need to do things to improve our football team, then you know Jerry, he'll be pushing everybody around here uh, to do something to get better. Again, that's Stephen Jones uh, on kind of his uh, microcosm state of the 2015 Cowboys uh, and basically saying that, you know, there's so many reasons to be optimistic health-wise, uh, the guys that have been picked up pretty much on the cheap, and you can understand the optimism uh, from him and the rest of the Cowboys uh, concerning what happened last season. We'll talk about the running backs in just a minute. Uh, you know, the Cowboys especially address that. But as far as this rest of the team goes, defensively, there is a lot to love. Yeah, I mean, they, they've made some improvements, and uh, a, a lot of that is going to depend on what Hardy can do once once he can play. I think some of that's going to depend on what uh, Gregory, you know, can do, especially especially early on as he's uh, as he's as he's learning. Uh, also, um, Demarcus Lawrence, what he can do after coming back off of of injury. They need to figure out a way to to get to the quarterback, and, and Jeremy Mitzi's holding out now, which complicates things. A little bit, you know. He led the team with six sacks last year. That shows you how anemic that pass rush was. But they're pretty deep at linebacker now. But again, Rolando McLean, you know, with his situation, going to miss some time. And uh, Sean Lee, always an, an injury concern. Hopefully, he can stay healthy. But no, uh, there's more reason for optimism than there's been uh, defensively. No doubt about it. And you look at those numbers as you alluded to uh, with dropback quarterbacks and how much the Cowboys affect 
a quarterback, an opposing quarterback, when they drop back. They're almost last in the league pretty much every single year. I mean, the, the historically bad defense from a couple of years ago under Monty Kiffin, that was an obvious example. But it, you can even go further back than that. This defense has not been able to affect the quarterback at all. And even though they were able to get by last year with, with a mediocre output, and a lot of that had to do with time of possession, ball control, things like that because of the offense, uh, still, though, it, you know, I think this – set of Cowboys understand that your secondary is huge, turnovers are absolutely critical to the game, and given the additions they've had at linebacker, both with Sean Lee returning and other things, and how much they've uh, invested in the secondary now, it really feels like even if they can't affect the quarterback as much as they would like or as much as the Cowboy faithful would like, they may be able to force even more turnovers than before, and that to me is the biggest reason for optimism yeah and it's just a matter of, of flipping the field and, and and putting your offense in a little better situation you know especially with some uncertainty in the running game there who knows how many long drives are going to be able to grind out especially early on as they're trying to figure some things out there but yeah they they, they need to force more turnovers they need to put more pressure on on the quarterback and i said it going into camp last year that rod marinelli might have been the most important person in that training camp just because of what they were asking him to do and he turned out to be a guy who who lived up to the to the expectation he'll have a little better talent to work with this year especially once everybody's back and and ready to go but he's still going to need to uh to pull some uh, to pull some rabbits out of his hat and moving on offensively now uh tony romo only missed one game that, I mean, that was absolutely critical mm-hmm. to the Cowboys' success. Uh, offensive line, a lot to like there, especially with those additions. Uh, Des Bryant's coming back. That contract situation is settled, so you would assume no more, no more distractions from him. The rest of the wide receiving core had more snaps and had more opportunities to play with the rest of the guys during OTAs. I guess, you know, before we look at the running back situation, how would you kind of diagnose the rest of this offense coming into, into camp? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to like there. There's no doubt. I mean, Romo and, and Jock Taylor Sunday night, I thought, put it well on, on Sports Sunday when he said, Romo now at age 35, his his intellect and his physical ability have met at a really nice place right now for him because he's not able to move quite the way he used to be, but I think that's almost a positive because he's not tempted to do as many crazy things out of the pocket as he used to. But he's really a guy who most of the time plays under control right now and I think is, is less of a uh, risk taker. And, and He had one of the best years he's ever had uh, last year. Um, yeah, Dez should have a monster season. I think Witten still has another really productive year or two in him. You know, this offensive line is good, but I, I, I've never heard an offensive line hyped as much as That's this true. one. That's and true. Obviously, the decision at running back was made in large part because of the expectations for this O-line. And again, it's very good. You know, one of those guard spots, there's some uncertainty there. But um, so, yeah, th- th- this offense should be really, really productive. Doesn't the offensive line need a nickname for them to be considered <laughs> yeah, the, the greatest of all time? I don't know what that nickname is. No, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure either. It seems like pass rush to defensive lines have, have had uh, nicknames, the fearsome foursome and the purple people, people eaters and all that. But I don't know what this O-line Yeah, just about been. every other group you can imagine that may be boring or, or you know won't always have the spotlight will have some kind of a nickname. But this Cowboys offensive line needs a nickname. Someone yeah. needs to come up with something. The thing I like about this O-line is that they actually talk a little bit, too. Travis Frederick's a pretty personable yeah. guy. Tyron Smith is, is is a well-spoken guy. You just mm-hmm. never hear him. He doesn't talk that much, but sure. he uh, he's a very thoughtful guy. And, and and Martin as well. O linemen tend to usually really keep to themselves, but I think you know th- this group has a chance to uh, sort of become beloved by Cowboy fans. But whether people are asking a lot of them, that's for sure. And don't forget Lyle Collins. I mean, you know, there wasn't a dry eye in the room uh, during yeah, that oh, news exactly. conference, and even his subsequent interviews have been very powerful. Yeah, and uh, that'll that'll be one of the fascinating stories of uh, this this early season to to see where he fits into the mix. And now we get to the running back core, Sands, DeMarco Murray. And here, once again, are the Cowboys talking about it. Randall, uh, we have a player that uh, uh, has, uh, has the potential. And we base that not based on uh, what he did at Oklahoma State or how we drafted him, but by literally being with him uh, as a teammate around here for the last two years but he has the potential to uh, be the kind of back that uh, uh, would step in there and um, uh, be your number one back. 
uh, if if he were not here, then I wouldn't feel as good about uh, uh, these uh, as we go into the season and what might happen. Uh, then I want to look over there at McFadden uh, because uh, McFadden does have the potential, the potential to, uh, 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 with the uh, right uh, numbers of carries uh, and the right opportunity, he has the potential to be not only a steady back, but a steady back that does very, uh, uh, makes significant plays, big plays. And uh, uh, to some degree, that's the kind of back, if you add those two together, uh, that we had in Murray. And uh, I think these guys, when you add potential, they give you some of that same potential, both physically as well as uh, their opportunity and their experience to uh, get us there. And all those guys are going to get plenty of opportunity to show what they can do. I uh, feel good about you know, what Lance Dunbar has done for our football team since he's been here. He's played a, a role for us on offense, done a lot of different things that have helped our team. Uh, Joseph Randall in a backup role did a good job for us last year, took advantage of his opportunities. Darren McFadden, a uh, high pick of the Raiders a number of years ago, a guy who's very talented, uh, tough, mentally tough, physically tough. Excited to have him aboard. We've got a couple of young guys we're going to give some opportunities to. So we're just excited at that position, just like at every position on our football team, to see these guys, give them a chance to show us who they are and what role they're going to fill as the season gets going. It is disingenuous to take away from the contributions of DeMarco Murray from this past season. Now, there are a lot of numbers you can point to to suggest that he would not have been able to replicate what he was able to do in 2014, and that's perfectly fair. But his pass blocking, his leadership, I mean, for all intents and purposes, everybody seemed, li everybody seemed to like him in that locker room. I mean, we never heard yeah. of anything negative, uh, you know, concerning how he was behaving or misbehaving with anybody else there. And, you know, in, in my take – a lot of this has to do more than anything else involves Joseph Randall. This this franchise has really invested in him more than I honestly thought they would going into the season. And, and I think, you know, w what Randall said about uh, meat being left on the bone, I mean, that, that was a talking point, not just from him, but you heard that coming out of Valley Ranch a lot, that, hey, Murray left a lot of yards on the field. You know, he, he, he had a huge hole to run through, but then couldn't make anybody miss. And I'm not saying that didn't happen from time to time. I think what's easy to underestimate are how many runs that Murray, uh, the dirty runs, as, as Jason Garrett called right. them, runs that would have been uh, negative yardage plays, that at least he got back to the line of scrimmage or maybe got a yard just because he was such a powerful runner. And that's one thing the Cowboys don't have. I, I don't doubt that Randall will break some runs that Murray would not have. But they don't have a power back right now, and I think they're going to have to find one before the season starts just for certain situations, as you said, for blocking, if, if nothing else. I think they'll be able to run the ball again. They obviously won't have a back, you know, set the all-time single-season record for the franchise uh, this year. And I think they're going to, people are going to miss Murray a lot more than they think they are, and I think Tony Romo is going to miss him a lot. Absolutely. I mean, I, I do expect this to be more of a running back by committee situation, and that yeah, may work yeah. out. Yeah, I think they'll run the ball well enough to allow Romo to do what he needs to do. I, I want to say off the top of my head that the Cowboys, I think, were second or third in calling a run play versus calling a pass play, and it was still about like 55 56%. If you go to the middle of the league, it's less than 50%. You know, most teams pass the ball more than they run the ball, and that's just the evolution of this game. 
so you know when you hear balance it's not necessarily a 50 50 split it's more of like a 45 40 to 60 55 split and if they're able to achieve that and be successful with it then no one will complain and i, and I guess linehan was was the wild card last year as well which was interesting because passing threw the game ball, coordinator you know, <laughs> all over the place in detroit but then came in and really clearly with instructions from the uh, the front office and the head coach emphasized the running game even more and murray had a an historically good year for the Cowboys. So, uh, again, I think the pieces are in place to run it well enough, but they're going to have to make big plays down the field to be the kind of offense they want to be. So, Mike, you will be uh, in Oxnard next couple of weeks. Yeah, starting this weekend. Uh, we'll, we'll have Sports Sunday live from there on uh, Sunday night and be there all, all during the week as well. And so when we talk to you uh, on the next couple editions of Fox 4 Sports Watch, you will sound like you're on a phone. All right, because because I might be. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I'm trying to find a pay phone at a gas station or something to call in. Do you have quarters? Trying to save the minutes. You know? yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> okay. Or daytime minutes here. <laughs> so that does it for uh, this installment of Fox 4 Sports Watch. Uh, for the esteemable Mike Ducey, mm-hmm. I am merely Edward E. Gross. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care. On air, online, and totally mobile, this is Fox 4.